Hello everybody, it's Star Revan here, and welcome to another episode of Recap of Thrones. This is for Season 7, Episode 3, titled The Queen's Justice. If you're new to the show, every week I break down everything about each episode, providing some speculation, along with what I liked most about the episode, what I didn't like that much, I just break it all down. So getting to the rundown. So we have John who meets with Danny. Cersei gets her gift from Euron and discusses matters with the Iron Bank. Then we have Bran who returns home to Winterfell. Samwell cures Jorah. Grey Worm and company take Castle Rock by surprise. And finally, Jamie takes out High Garden along with its leader. So getting into the positives of the episode, Cersei's revenge was magnificent. It was probably one of the cruelest things I've ever seen on Game of Thrones. I have a feeling that Cersei is almost like the Mad King Ares at this point. She just does whatever it takes and she basically takes what happened with her daughter and magnifies it in the eyes of Alaria. I thought it was just brilliant how she basically gives her a taste of her own medicine and is gonna just make her watch her daughter die in front of her forever how long it is not being able to talk and just being her eyes glued on her daughter not knowing when she's gonna pass is just absolutely brilliant another death I want to talk about is with Lady Olena and wow that was kind of the complete opposite of a death scene that we had in the beginning of the episode so this is between Jamie and Lady Olena and Jamie kinda lets her go in her own way with uh, this l long sleep or whatever it's called by Meister Quyburn and Lady Elena even on her deathbed still manages to throw in some kind of master plan that really screws Jamie's head up when she says that she was the person that actually uh, was the architect behind Joffrey's death and it's just like that last sting she gets on Jamie before she dies like she's always the one on top even when she's gonna die I thought that was just brilliant and just that whole scene of how you know she knows she's lost and she's gonna still try to be that dominant figure between in the conversation which she has always been so she's gonna be missed in this series that's for sure another thing I liked about the episode was the sacking of Casserly Rock it was the first time we actually seen this location in the TV series heard a lot about it in the book and it was cool getting that narration by Tyrion Lannister about how they were gonna go take and how it was gonna be so difficult but in reality the Lannisters basically let him have it It was part of their game plan they're just they're gonna let that go to the hands of um, Daenerys because it's really not worth much for them they need to get money for the the bank so they have to go and take out the Tyrells who have all that land who have all those crops and they just aren't even used to combat so I did like seeing Unsullied versus the Lannisters for the first time we're gonna get the Unsullied meeting with a force in Westeros and seeing how they interact we have completely different military training backgrounds for both of these soldiers and well it looks like the Unsullied were pretty well on top as evidenced by well completely sacking the city and finally, I can't talk about this episode without talking about the meeting of fire and ice, as Melisandre puts it. John and Daenerys meeting a song of ice and fire. This is where it happens, guys. This is what we've been waiting for for years now, and it actually is happening. And holy crap, I was on the edge of my seat this whole time. There was so much tension. Now, Jon Snow coming from the north doesn't want to bend the knee. He went against all of the reasoning of his fellow compatriots about not going south because whoever goes south always seems to die and he has so much faith in his cause that he had to go down there and he still doesn't kneel in the face of an enemy pretty much he still has the courage to stand there and you know give Daenerys his plight of his reasoning for doing that and then you have Daenerys who's obviously not looking pleased with this and I thought it couldn't have gone better because we have these two very well liked characters coming together they have their own agendas and John is trying to get her to send troops to help them against the Night King and the White Walkers and at the end she does break a little bit and give him the land but it now seems like John is sort of almost like a prisoner on Dragonstone so we're gonna see how that plays out so that was it for my positives on this episode Moving into something I didn't like, and this is not something particular with the episode, but it's just something I want to get off my chest. So the whole portrayal of Euron is something that is completely different from the book. I know I'm being one of those people that's like a book snob, 
But um, the more I see this character, the more I really start to hate him. Um, not the kind of Ramsey Bolton hate, but just the kind of hate that this guy is just pretty much a jerk. <laughs> in other words, that he's just... He doesn't really look like he's supposed to in the book. Like, in the book, he's supposed to be this guy with his lot. What I looked at him at, what I've read from the book was he's got long hair. Apparently, he's got an eye patch, big, long beard. And now they're making him look all fair and stuff in this. And then all the ladies seem to love the character. But, um, yeah, he just rubs him the wrong way. Nothing with the actor. I think the actor's doing a great job. I just, uh, I want to see him die sooner rather than later. And moving into my speculation, so there was a little bit of foreshadowing dropped by Melisandre before she left for Volantis when she's talking to Varys. She said that she is going to come back to Westeros at some point and her and Varys will die there. So what does that mean? So why is Melisandre going back to Volantis? Well, that is where all the Red Priests are. I'm thinking she's going to try to gather up these Red Priests and try to bring them back to summon some kind of... Lord of Light kind of stuff to battle the, the the Night King and all that, so maybe that'll happen. Another thing I want to speculate on, um, especially after this episode, with Cersei just being so cruel, I think Jamie's going to start to lose faith in his own sister, his own lover. He might even turn his back on her, I think, at some point. And now, especially seeing what he's done with Alaria and, and her daughter, I think he's really going to you know have doubts about her and that's going to just sow the seed even more at this point so i'm going to get into my quote of the episode this is from peter baelish talking to santa stark he says don't fight in the north or the south fight every battle everywhere in your mind and that's just something that really resonated with me about how just don't stay focused don't stay tunnel vision on a certain thing if you think about all the different fronts they're fighting you have to play things one step ahead in your mind. That's how Peter Baelish has always been playing the Game of Thrones. It's just staying one step ahead of everybody, anticipating what will happen next. So that is what I thought of Game of Thrones Season 7, Episode 3, titled The Queen's Justice. Now it's time for you guys to tell me what you thought of the episode in that comment section below. What did you think of the meaning of Jon Snow and Daenerys? What did you actually think of... Jor Mormont getting cured. I thought that was pretty cool. Let's talk about it in that comment section below. Also, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I have plenty of other content, including lots of Star Wars content that I post weekly, as well as movies and TV. I'm Star Raptor. I want to thank you guys for watching, and bye bye So, did you like the video? Then make sure you rate it a thumbs up, and if you did that, go over there, hit that Star Raptor head so you subscribe to my channel. Doing so will keep you up to speed on all of my latest content. Speaking of which, you can see a couple of my recent uploads down below. I'm also on social media, so what are you waiting for? Let's start nerding out.